Hello, in this video we're going to study mechanical energy. Energy is a very important concept not only in physics but in all sciences and really it's what relates physics to the other sciences. So it's really important that we have a good understanding of what energy is and how we use it. Our basic definition of energy is the ability to do work. Now work is something that we haven't studied yet. And so I'm going to kind of rephrase that a little bit and say it's the ability to change the motion of something else. So that something else could be large objects or it could be things like um, atoms or molecules in something. Um, energy is a scalar term, which means it doesn't include a direction. So size is the only thing that's important when we think about energy. Energy, again, allows us to connect mechanics, or force and motion units, to other areas of physics, such as waves, electricity, magnetism, light, optics, um, and chemical systems. And so when you learn about chemical bonds and chemistry, really you are learning about chemical energy. And so when we move into things that can't be studied using the techniques we did in our mechanics unit, we're going to use energy techniques to do them. The unit that we measure energy in is a joule, and we'll see if we can define that later. And the real reason that energy is important is because it's a quantity that stays constant in many situations. And so one of our lessons will be on conservation of energy, and we'll see why that energy um, is so useful. We know a little bit about kinetic energy, which has the symbol K. Kinetic energy is energy through motion. Moving objects have kinetic energy. It depends on the mass of the object and its velocity. And so if we have an object of mass m moving at velocity v, it would have kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. Again, it's a scalar. If you square the v, you end up with a positive number regardless of whether it's positive or negative. If you have a system of objects, then the kinetic energy is just the sum of all the kinetic energies of the objects in the system. And the nice thing about energy is, since it's a scalar, we don't have to worry about direction. And so moving in different directions doesn't affect our kinetic energy at all. So let's look at an example. Suppose we have a system of objects um, made up of three objects that are all moving in different directions. So I got three objects all moving in different directions. We want to know what is the kinetic energy of the system. Again, remember that kinetic energy is a scalar. The direction doesn't matter to us. And so to find the kinetic energy of the system, I'm just going to add up the individual kinetic energies. So add up the individual quantities, one-half mv squared. So just kind of writing that all out like this. It doesn't really matter if I make that 10 negative or not because when I square it, it's going to end up being positive. And so this would reduce to 200 joules plus 300 joules plus 64 joules added up to be 564 joules. If those objects were going in the opposite directions from what we had drawn before, that would not change the energy one little bit. Changing the size of the velocity or the mass would be the only thing that would change the answer for that energy. It's important to note that an object by itself can only have kinetic energy. If we want to have other kinds of energies, then we have to have a system. We um, pretty much assume that objects don't have any internal structure to them. So when I say find the kinetic energy of that object that has a mass of 4 kilograms, I don't really worry about what it's, what it's made of. I know it's made of atoms or molecules of some kind, but I treat the object like it doesn't have anything internal to it. We'll talk more about how you would deal with that later on. So here's an object. It's got kinetic energy. However, if it were included with a system with the Earth, the Earth is included as part of the system, then this system of several objects would have a kind of energy called potential energy. 
The reason that would have potential energy is because those objects within the system can exert forces on each other, and those forces can change the motion of the objects. That's our definition of energy. Other things that could change the motion of that object would be something like a spring, possibly an electric charge, possibly a magnet. And so those are all things that if they're included in a system of objects, they can provide a kind of energy called potential energy. So what exactly is this potential energy? If you want to symbolize potential energy, you're going to give it the symbol capital U. We can't use a P because we already have P's running around for other things. Potential energy is energy through position or arrangement. And so the Earth can provide you energy because you are arranged at a position above it. It pulls you down, and in pulling you down, you could do work on something else, make something else move. Only a system of objects can have potential energy. It's real important to know that. An object, single object by itself, can't have any potential energy. If the internal forces between objects, so the objects within a system, are considered conservative forces, which means that the path doesn't determine how much work is done, then we can define a potential energy for that force. So gravity is an example of a conservative force, meaning that the path doesn't matter. We'll talk more about conservative forces later. Um, but if we have a force that follows that rule, like it doesn't matter what um, path you take in order to do work on something, then we can define a potential energy for that. So it may not be entirely clear just yet, but we'll come back to that later on. So the two kinds of potential energy we need to know about. The first is gravitational potential energy, which you're going to symbolize with the U subscript G. And that's, again, energy due to arrangement. That's the definition of potential energy. Gravitational potential energy would be due to arrangement in a gravitational field, such as the one due to the Earth. That's going to depend on three things. One is the mass of the object in question. Two is the height of that object relative to some reference point. And then the third is the size of the gravitational field. Remember, we symbolize that with a little g. And we combine those into an equation. You just multiply the three terms together, and you get the gravitational potential energy. Probably the simplest physics equation we'll see all year. Now again, potential energy is only energy within a system. And so to have a potential energy term, you have to include the Earth in your system. That's going to be very, very important. That's a skill that we'll work on throughout our unit. The second kind of potential energy we need to know about is called elastic potential energy. This is the potential energy in a spring. Um, a rubber band would be analogous to a spring, but it doesn't exactly follow a nice rule the way that a spring does. So this is energy due to your arrangement near a stretched or compressed spring. If the spring is relaxed, then it won't be able to store any energy, won't be able to make anything move. So it needs to be stretched or compressed. This depends on two things. Number one is this, the qualities of the spring, how stiff it is. Um, remember that's quantified with the term spring constant. Think back to our forces unit we studied Hooke's law. That's that spring constant K. The second is how far the spring is stretched or compressed. We'll give that the symbol x. It's a distance. And so combining those two things together, the relationship looks something like 1 half kx squared. And when we learn a little bit more about work, we'll see where that equation comes from. We'll actually derive that. Um, it's not too tough. For right now, we just need to be able to use the um, equation. This is for an ideal spring, meaning one that follows Hooke's law. We won't have to deal mathematically with anything that's not an ideal spring, but just something to know. A rubber band would not follow the same rule, even though a rubber band is capable of storing uh, elastic energy. Again, you have to include the spring as part of your defined system in order to have an elastic potential energy.
Very important to remember that. We're going to work a lot on how we define our system to make problems more easy to solve. So let's look at a second example. Suppose that I have a system of objects, something like this, and we want to know how much mechanical energy this system has. And so it's a 7 kilogram object on top of a table that's 1.4 meters from a reference point. The spring constant K is 500 newtons, and the spring is compressed by 0.1 meter, or it could be stretched by 0.1 meter. It doesn't matter which way you go. So we're going to define the system. That's going to be important to us. To consist of that 7 kilogram block, the spring itself, and the earth. If I define my system that way, then I have two potential energy terms, potential energy due to gravity and the potential energy due to the spring, plus we will always have a kinetic energy term. Now since the thing's not moving, kinetic energy in this case would be zero. Doesn't mean that always has to be true. And so I can find the gravitational potential energy from the MGH equation. I can find the energy in the spring from the one-half kx squared equation and then just substitute in the numbers. So doing some arithmetic, we would get 98 joules for the gravitational potential energy and 5 joules for the elastic potential energy. And so the mechanical energy would be something like 103 joules. So that's the end of our lesson on mechanical energy. Obviously, we'll do practice and labs and try to get better at this in class. The important thing to remember, going back a little bit here, is that objects by themselves can only have a kinetic energy term. Potential energy arises from interaction between things within a system of objects. Just like systems were very important in our momentum unit, systems are going to be very important in our energy unit. As always, if you have questions or anything I said didn't make sense, please come and ask, and we'll try to get it cleared up. Bye-bye.